Good morning. Here we are at TCC. We're in the coffee bar room. As you can see, it's also our library. Steve's still getting situated. <laughs> it's another beautiful, beautiful fall day at 10th Street here. We are so thankful. It's, it's to get 70. 70. Um, just so thankful for the weather. I, I just... Well, we've been doing it too. Last minute things with the house outside. I even had the paintbrush. I was touching up, still touching up a uh, trim on the north side of our house that was pounded by hail. And so this is pretty late in the game to do it, but I was doing it. And um, today is supposed to be another beautiful day. So we're so thankful for that. So the thing of what I enjoy, I didn't write it down, but it happened this morning. Um, I was bringing some things to our garage, to the car, pretty early in the morning. And so it was still dark outside. And as I was standing on our boardwalk, I just looked up at the stars and I just stopped looked up at the stars and then I just start looking around and on the east side of our house our border there our boundary line I don't know what kind of trees those are but there's no leaves on them and the way they were silhouetted against the sky it was breathtaking it was like God's artwork for me I just thought, wow, it, it was just the timing of day, the lighting, graphic design, that's what it was. And so I enjoyed that. We've had some days here lately too where the lake was like a mirror, you know, all yes. it can get is like glass. Yes, it was. It was that way on Sunday. And another day too, maybe two or three days here. It's really, it's kind of hard to think that this is November. Yes. You know, but sometimes that happens. But we also could have a, I remember one time Joyce and I went to see some friends of ours in Rapid City and it was over, it was, we were on our way back on, I think it was Halloween day. Okay. I think that was on a Friday. <clears throat> and we only got as far as Philip, or not Philip, uh, Chamberlain. And this that, was this time of year? Yeah, it was, we went to see Ron and Doris Palcher there. Mm -hmm. who were, he was, Ron was pastoring a pastor there, and her and her, Doris and him were ministering there in Rapid City on our way home. We ran into snow. And I really ran into snow. You're talking about you and me. You and I. Yeah. I remember that was the day that somebody threw a pumpkin down in front of us off of a overpass. A frozen Hit the bottom pumpkin. of our car. And it damaged the muffler. Yeah. That was not good. But anyway, then the next day, Saturday, we were going to try to get home because then the next day would be Sunday, of course. And we were needing to get back here, but... It turned out to be the, I forget what year it was, but it was called the Halloween storm, the great Halloween storm. And Everybody we were was, caught in it. <laughs> <laughs> we got as far as Fargo, <laughs> but church was called off to, I think we had 14 inches here. Wow. That was on Halloween day. Joy, aren't you glad we don't have 14 inches Which would have been right on Monday, here. and that pretty much brings winter right all at once yeah. then, you know. Yeah. But So that makes me even more thankful <laughs> yeah. for the weather we've been having. Yeah, right. Thank you, Lord. It does. We, we even, with some of the grandkids, Joy was there. We had, we got a little fire pit thing fire stove on our deck and uh gotten in to make some oreos and we've done that quite a few times 
We just got that fire pit probably the end of August or It's something September. Steve wanted. He says, I want to do this with the grandkids. Oh, it's just an opportunity to sit around and talk together. After they get home from school. From school and yeah. But anyway, we did that last night on November 1st in November, and I took a picture of them because they were in shorts. <laughs> <laughs> they were playing out in the yard. I love it. And Grandpa gets to talk to him in a little bit. Yes. Grandma was painting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hallelujah. Yes. So we had a great hallelujah night last week. Last week, Wednesday, you got the tour. And you saw the wonderful artwork and <clears throat> also the creativity of the games and and it was. There's a lot of kids here, a lot of parents too with their kids. Mm -hmm. and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was good. A lot of candy <laughs> <laughs> and prizes and popcorn. So that was quite a blessing, too. And Joy <clears throat> and Elsie did a puppet skit. That was the main message this year. We didn't hear that. We left before that. Yeah, the message. That. What was the core of the message of that puppet skit, Joy? Uh, it was, I was a frog, a tadpole, and I had to change into a frog so that I could leave my muddy, swampy home and go to a fresh, clean pond. So it was like, as a Christian, you change into a new creature. Okay. New creature, new creation, yeah. That's awesome. So there's a focus on the gas or the good news. The yeah, and then we had them all repeat the to ask Jesus into their heart. I yeah. love it. Oh, that's a good intro that. for what we're talking about yes. today because we mentioned a few times here now, I know it's on the Lord's heart that it's the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation for you if you mm -hmm. haven't received Christ yet as mm -hmm. your Savior. And that's what you need to do personally yourself. The truth is, and we can find it in the Bible, the truth is that Jesus has already paid the price in the eyes of the whole universe and before God for all the sin of every person that ever has lived or ever will live. Mm -hmm. The catch is that we need to personally receive yep. that. Yes. You know, you, somebody can have a gift for you, but if you don't receive it, it's not yours. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not really yours. I mean, you haven't appropriated it, I guess is a word you could use. And it's so true of salvation. And now we that have received the Jesus as our Savior, we've been made ambassadors for him. We've been made representatives to tell mm -hmm. the people. There's, that makes me think of a song I have here. I've mentioned Andre Crouch quite often <clears throat> in our times because when I was like Joy's age, he was my favorite singer, Andre Crouch. And he had a song, I'll, I'll read it here, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, tell them, even if they don't believe you, just tell them. Even if they don't receive you, oh, tell them for me, tell them for me, please, please, tell them for me. Mm -hmm. Tell them that I love them, and I came to let them know. And of course, it's written from mm -hmm. God's perspective to, to us, putting out the call that we share the gospel mm -hmm. with people. And then the next line, it goes, tell them when it seems you are forsaken, just tell them. Though it seems you are, your earth is, seems you are earthly shaken, Oh, tell them for me. Please tell them. Please. It's like a pleading. Tell them for me. Tell them that I love them and I came to let them know. Mm -hmm. 
Next verse, tell that lonely man who walks the cold streets all alone. Mm -hmm. Tell that crying child who doesn't have a home. <clears throat> tell those hungry people dying and lost in the desert. They don't even know that I care. Mm -hmm. And then there's an instrumental bridge and then it goes back to tell them for me, please. Tell them that I love them. And then there's, I don't know what you call this. It's not really a verse, but it says, Oh, just tell them on the streets and on the highways. And tell them even on the byways. Tell them I can mend the broken heart and restore the ones who have parted from me. And I came to let them know I came to let them know, I came to let them know, they must know, they must know, must know. And that's a call, wow, you can just feel the anointing, mm -hmm. and just sense the anointing on that, that maybe you don't know. And you know, if you do know, maybe you can send this to friends and loved ones, mm -hmm. that maybe you believe need to hear this word. Mm -hmm. That God so loved the world, let's all say it together here, yes. that he gave, he gave his, his only begotten God Son, God that whosoever God believes in him, him will not, not perish, perish, but have God everlasting, everlasting life. life. And so we believe, we decide, it's a decision to believe God's word, and then we say it. Confess it. That's what it says in Romans 10, 9, and 10. It says we believe with our heart and confess our mouth, with our mouth, the Lord Jesus and his resurrection, we shall be saved. Yeah. So, So hallelujah. it reminds me of last Wednesday, we did the uh, tour downstairs, but the Wednesday before, you had that opportunity with that young man. Yeah. that came here. You haven't shared about that. No. Yeah. touch point. There's a young man, I won't say his name no. right now, but we were in our prayer meeting. We were halfway through it. It was on a Wednesday. A Wednesday. We have a prayer meeting here at 10 o'clock after this, mm -hmm. after we do this. He came in. I know the Lord led him. Mm -hmm. he, he knew it too. Because you know, he was, he very easily could have died because it was very cold. And I got down to 18 degrees, I think, that night, the coldest night we've had. And he was outdoors, very scantily cold. I mean, he didn't have much on. And, yeah, well, anyway, he ended up coming in the church house here. <laughs> and he came to the Lord. He did just what we said mm -hmm. here. See, that's where we need to be ready, in season or out of season. You don't expect in the middle of a prayer meeting, but you know what? You maybe don't expect in the uh, mousetrap aisle at, at Walmart to run into somebody. <laughs> that's gonna, that's gonna, the, the Lord might have yes. you share Jesus with them. Yeah. We're all trying to catch our the mice right now. <laughs> God's trying to catch us. Yeah, Only it's good. not in a trap. Jesus took the yes. trap for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Well, what started this all was Joyce's memory of, it comes goes back to Grandpa Koiker. Mm -hmm. Gra Grandpa William Koiker. John William. John William. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, he had that heart. And he was ready instant. In fact, he purposeful, purposefully picked up hitchhikers uh, to, with the idea that he was going to share the Lord with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, he knew the simple gospel. If you, if you aren't prepared to share the gospel, you need to get prepared. So you can And I'm talking this. about the simple yeah. gospel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's something we have here. Uh, did I mention this last week? I think I mentioned mm -hmm. it. Can you just hold it up there, Coles? Uh, 
and this is what this is called the four spiritual laws and all my for years when was this first 19 1965 I mean I've been using this my dad I think used it and mm -hmm. something that Bill Bright put together he was with Campus Crusade for Christ and we have them here at the church there if you're if you're part of our local church you can pick them up uh, at the welcome center we have them there and if we run out we get more of them because oh, yeah it is such a simple and there's other ones too like here's another one this is worldwide publications i'm not sure is that billy graham billy graham, graham. billy graham. graham i used that at my dad's funeral to share this one you could show that one too that's you know and you can go online and find i'm sure those I have one here that my daughter Sarah actually put together, and I think Vicki, at that time Sorin, but now Sharon, instructed her, and I think the youth group maybe at that time. They, they all made, and you can show the pages of that, Joy. Uh, that's one that Sarah put together. Vicki had done one too. <clears throat> you know, that's something Junior that wouldn't high. be a bad idea. To, mm -hmm. It would be a good idea to look into that again, to, because that's something you can give someone and has your personal testimony on it. Yes. And receiving Christ, and I'm guessing it probably tells you how to receive Christ too on there. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever see that, Joy? You never saw it. Oh, oh. you should but keep that one anyway, for yourself. Anyway, why don't you keep one then? Yeah, that's your mother. I don't know how old she was. Junior high, <laughs> I think. I'm probably Joyce age. <laughs> Maybe Sarah should make a new one, right, Sarah? <laughs> but anyway, okay, here's one more. My decision. This one looks like, this is a Billy Graham one here. Yeah, that one is too. It's called My Decision. So we're going to take just a few minutes and we're going to quickly go through this and I'm going to have Joy hold the pages up so you can see them. I didn't tell her that ahead of time. <laughs> Hope, I know Joy has strong arms so she can hold them up there. Oh, or maybe you can go like this or something. <laughs> okay, so the fr front page, this is something, I've, this, all these I keep in my briefcase. Sometimes I'll have one in my back pocket or we have some in the car, mm -hmm. you know, that we can give to people. I have one in my, often in my Bible or in your purse, mm -hmm. you know, you could keep them. I usually have two of them because what I like to do is I, I read on one and then I let the other person have it and I let them read it through with me. Right. But we're just going to go through the highlights of it. So the first page says, have you heard of the four spiritual laws? And then, just as there are physical laws that govern the physical universe, so there are spiritual laws that govern your relationship with God. Law number one, God loves you <laughs> and offers a wonderful plan for your life. And then there's the scripture like we just quoted, John 3.16. And then there's another verse, John 10.10. And then it says, why is that? Why is it that most people are not experiencing the abundant life? Because, and then we go to page two. You want to read that, Joyce? Man is sinful and separated from God. Therefore, he cannot know and experience God's love and plan for his life. Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Man was created to have fellowship with God, but because of his own stubborn self-will, he chose to go his own independent way and fellowship with God was broken. This self-will characterized by an attitude of active rebellion or passive indifference. Passive indifference is an evidence of what the Bible calls sin. Passive indifference. That's I think huge. a lot of people have that. Yeah. They just don't give 
the time of day to the things of the Spirit and mm -hmm. things of God and eternal life. They're so focused on the things of the earth. But some have active rebellion, too. It just reminds me, um, because you just there when you receive a call, you know, someone in a family passed away and they need to find a pastor, a church or whatever for the funeral, you can tell which ones just now they're thinking, and it's not even necessarily about salvation. They're just thinking, I have to take care of my wife's mm -hmm. funeral. And it may not even be at a church, you know, but mm -hmm. they're, they're, you can tell, Steve can tell that when he's mm -hmm. talking to this person about the details, whether they were just passively indifferent right. about it. And so what we need to do is let them know, and you can put that next page up there, Joy. It says, man is separated the, from God. And you can see that illustration there. It shows on the bottom, sinful man. And on top there is holy God. The wages of sin is death. And that's spiritual separation from God. That's what spiritual death is. And you can see the diagram that shows... You know, and man can try to, some of those arrows, they represent like like trying to live a good enough life without sin or religions, you know, that aren't centered in Christ, you know. But the third law explains the only way to bridge that gulf, and let's see what that is. And you can put the... Put it well, wherever you want there, I guess, Joy, for them to look at. Joyce, you want to read three? Jesus Christ is God's only provision for man's sin. Through him, you can know and experience God's love and plan for your life. Romans 5 eight. God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us in our place. Christ in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 6, Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day. According to the scriptures, he appeared to Peter, then to the 12 disciples. After that, he appeared to more than 500. He is the only way to God. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. That's John 14, 6. And then you can describe that. Well, them. you can see the diagram there that illustrates that God has bridged the gulf that separated us from him by sending his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross in our place to pay the penalty for our sins. But it is not enough just to know these three laws. We must, law four is, we must individually receive Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. Then we can know and experience God's love and plan for our lives. John 1, 12, as many as received him to them gave he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. By grace you have been saved through faith, and that's not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not as a result of works that uh, anyone should boast. And so when we receive Christ, we receive a new birth, mm -hmm. like Joy was talking about. The tadpole became... Yeah. <laughs> it was it's like a new birth. Another example is like the dragonfly. You know, that comes like it's a what do they call that in the water when it's in the water? You know? But anyway larva? larva maybe. But then it's born again kind of <laughs> metamorphosis. <laughs> you know, that's the the Greek word for uh, transformation and it's like a butterfly you know from a caterpillar to a butterfly 
And that's what happens to us when we receive Christ. And then it goes on and there's some more things like it encourages us to, uh, it, there's a prayer to receive Christ, an actual prayer. In fact, maybe we should do that. And if you have never done it before, you can pray along with us to receive Jesus right now as your Savior. Uh, oh, wow, how wonderful that would yes. be. Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to have Joyce lead us in that prayer. And why don't you say it, and then we'll repeat, and that's like you can do the same. Okay, prayer is talking with God. God knows your heart. He's not so concerned with if you're using the right words or whatever. He sees the attitude of your heart. So this is a prayer we can pray. Lord Jesus, I need you. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open the door of my life. I open the door of my life. And receive you as my Savior and Lord. And receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you for forgiving my sins. And giving me eternal life. And giving me eternal life. Take control of the throne of my life. Take control of the throne of my life. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. Yes. And so if that's prayer uh, expresses a desire of your heart, you can invite Jesus into your heart by personally praying a prayer like yes. that. And he will come into your heart and your life. And the truth is, from, and we know this from the Word of God, that the Holy Spirit, when you prayed that prayer, the Holy Spirit, see, you're a spirit being, you live in a body, but you are a spirit that lives in this body. And when you prayed that prayer, the Holy Spirit came and joined with your spirit. And that's what brings you eternal life then. You're a forever creature now. You're like that tadpole that's become the frog. <laughs> <laughs> or the caterpillar that's become the butterfly. I mean, you're a new creation. That says that in the Bible as well. There's a lot of things about you. You're part of the body of Christ. You're part of the family of God. You're my brother and sister. And Joyce is in Joy's. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing is don't go by your feelings. And Joy can show you the picture of the train there. That happens quite often. Is that well, you, Like now today, if you just receive Christ, you might feel saved or you might not feel that way. Your feelings may not change. It's an inward transformation, you know. Your hair is probably still the same color. And, you know, your height is the same and so forth. But inside, you become a new creation. And here's this little train. Shows how it needs to go. The facts are what we find in the God's Word, the Bible. And behind that is faith. And we make a decision. I'm going to believe. I believe. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I have faith in God. Right. I believe the Word of God. And then there's the caboose, is the feelings. Now, the, the feelings will come along if we just keep going. But if we want to stop and go by the way of the feelings, we're going to go downhill. And that's not good. Uh, One thing here, another thing, why don't you show it on page 14. Um, it shows things for Christian growth for you. The G is go to God in prayer daily. And there's a scripture there, you can see it. You can go back and freeze that frame and, and get these things. Um, R is read God's word daily. Begin with the Gospel of John. That's a very good one. O, obey God's God moment by moment. Obedience. 
W, witness for Christ by your life and your words. Tell others about this. Share mm -hmm. this video with others. T, trust God for every detail of your life. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that is so mm -hmm. important. And then H, Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to control and empower your daily life and witness. Mm -hmm. And then it talks about fellowship in a good church, how important that is. God's Word instructs us to for, not forsake the assembling of ourselves mm -hmm. together, as is the manner of some. That's mm -hmm. Hebrews 10, 25. Several logs burn brightly together, but put one aside on a cold hearth, hearth, and the fire goes out. So it is with your relationship with other Christians. So anyway, this is something, if you don't have one, you know, we can get them to you here at church, mm -hmm. or you can just order them online, I'm sure. This one is the one I use the most. Mm -hmm. just, I like the size of it. Mm -hmm. and it's interesting, when we were working at um, the Red Umbrella, I think it was last week, I realized that your dad has several of these laying on his office desk there in the back. Andrew has his Vision have. Properties office in the back of um, Red Umbrella, and I like that. I know he's that way with his staff, you know, yeah. and... Um, Instant in season and out. That's yeah. Where we need to be. And other contacts, too. Well, hallelujah, our time is there. So Where? we want to say it's <laughs> at the end. And so we want to say goodbye. Yeah, We love blessings. you much. And we'll see you again next Wednesday. Yes. Goodbye.